Since the early 1960s, per capita milk consumption in developing countries has increased almost twofold. More than 6 billion people worldwide consume milk and dairy products, and it's estimated that this will increase exponentially in the next 30 years. This increase in milk quantity has required a huge effort, which was achieved by developments in technology, nutrition, genetics, and management. Despite the clear progress made in all these fields, mastitis still remains the most common and costly disease of dairy cattle. The rapid development and changes in consumption patterns of emerging countries means that an exponential consumption of milk is anticipated. On the other hand, in the digital age, consumers are becoming more demanding and expect higher quality, farm sustainability and a reduction in antibiotic use. All these factors together mean that prevention of mastitis should be a priority for meeting future market demands. global movement of milk uh, may get a little bit smaller. If most countries or more countries are able to meet their own demands, there is less of a need to move milk uh, between countries. One in a bedding material is something that's sustainable, uh, possibly recycled, and actually ideally not going to support bacterial growth. The future bedding material is somewhat dependent on how you manage your cows and what's available. I would uh, think in three factors. I would think in the uh, cost of labor, I would think in the size of herd, and the, the third would be the stage of development of the country. I think we'll see a lot of diversity. Um, I think the big herds for sure, they're, they're going to go down the route of the, the rotaries. Um, the smaller herds to robots, the ones in between, I think we'll see still a, a wide range of different parlors used. If you look at the amount of milk that we need in terms of feeding people and then we look at the amount of people that are willing to farm, if we divide those two among one another we get I think a reasonable idea of the farm size. Uh, and therefore I think it's inevitable that we will see uh, farm size growing um, and, and that is probably to me the more driving force in, in the optimal or in the realistic farm size that we see in the future. So I'm, I'm not sure that we're going to deal with new bacteria per se, but we may deal with a predominant bacteria type that affects um, a region or a set of herds. But then understanding the interaction between the cow and the pathogen and the environment and how all of those things come together to then dictate what is prevalent within a given herd. We've gone in over the last uh, 50, 60 years implementing plans rigorously to remove the contagious pathogens, the, the staphs and um, the contagious streps. And then actually doing that created a vacuum. And the true opportunists are the ones that then are going to have the opportunity to move in and exploit that nutrient-rich environment. The most important thing from my point of view, we need to remember to keep in the loop the veterinary on the farm. We cannot take the decision or we cannot build in this system without putting a loop the vet. You use antibiotics uh, without a clear need. I think the main points are in the clinical mastites and the second are in the drying off. We will continue to use, but we can reduce to use it. Vaccine is an essential component and should be used, but uh, the decision should, should be made on a herd base. The better target for vaccination would be those strains that actually enter the, the mammary microbiome, that niche, and try and persist within that environment because you've got a, a longer period of trying to try and impact. But actually top of my list still for the, the ones we'd want would be the environmental strep vaccine. It's a new vaccine. I think from my point of view, strep uber is like everybody 
I agree, could be one of the priority with all the problem. And um, microplasma, even if it's more respiratory problem, but remember, we have still have 2% what we found, and maybe it could be in the future another microorganism really interesting. At IPRA, we have a vision, which is to be the reference in prevention for animal health. Together, we are building the future. We want to be your long-term partner. We want to share with you the knowledge that enables us to develop safe and reliable products. IPRA is rewriting the present to start rolling out a future that begins today. A future in which all of us here will have a decisive role to play.